Hello and welcome back my fellow artisans to the Artisan Electrics YouTube channel. Here we have an EICR video for you. Actually I did one the other day and um, this is the second one on that same day. So I'm, I'm busy here. It's the afternoon and I've got this uh, one bedroom flat EICR to do. Interesting shadow going on there. Uh, so yeah. <clears throat> Um, this is going to be a little bit more of a tricky one than the other one in that it's an older property that's from the 80s and it's got quite a lot of old wiring and stuff so I'll show you around and we'll get to some of the testing but as always if you enjoy my videos hit a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel I really welcome you and I hope that you'll subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on future videos thanks for watching and have a great day so here we are next one EICR one bedroom flat. I'm gonna have a little look at the meter here first and see what's going on. Okay, so that's gas meter. And we've got a gas bond and it looks to be in fairly good condition. So that's fine. And then electric meters here. So we have a dual tariff system by the... So here we have a 60 amp main fuse. 16 mil tails going into these Henley blocks and then from there up to the consumer unit. We've got two neutrals and two lives going up. So I presume that it used to be a dual tariff meter and now they've just basically got it on one of those smart meters. Um, so it's gonna be electric heating in that case. It's PME, TNCS, and we've got 10 mil bonds going out. So it looks like we've got main earth and then two 10 mil bonds, obviously one to the gas and then another one will be to the water. This is an older looking property. So it's probably not gonna be as straightforward as the other one. Consumer units, we've got two, so it is electric heating. And this one, okay, so there's no RCD protection on anything by the looks of it. That's turned off, so the electric heating board, presumably, yeah, off peak. Heater, something, storage heaters, okay, so we've got three heaters there, but they're all turned off. And then this one, we've got 232 amp circuits, 16 and a 6, so presumably it's sockets, cooker, water heater and lights, something like that. So it's a fairly small board. Um, originally looks like Mr. Barber, if he's still out there, um, installed this in 80, I'm not sure if I can read that, 84 is the retest date. 89, 84, and then under here, it looks like it has been inspected in January 2020. So um, that's not long ago, six months ago. So I don't know if they've had a recent change of tenancy or what's gone on, but um, yeah, time to do it again. So let's have a look around. So first of all, down here, we've got a downstairs toilet bathroom metallic light which will need checking for the earthing we've got a downflow heater which is working we've got this light so obviously bathroom lights but no rcd protection that straight away starts to ring alarm bells bit of lighting here um, upstairs lighting and there's an outside light there as well so if we go up stairs uh, it's very very small oh, it smells of smoke as well so this is sort of like kitchen living room type thing um, obviously we've got a cooker circuit there like I said and one socket in the kitchen which is pretty ridiculous Switch fuse connection unit up here. Not sure what that does. Not that, obviously. So we're gonna have to check that out. Um, 
couple of double sockets dotted around. There's a double socket and a switch fuse connection unit there, so I'm not quite sure what that switch fuse connection unit will be for. Um, washing machine. Under the sink, okay, so we've got a socket there for the washing machine, so that's good. Um, can't see the stopcock for the water. Let's have a look in here, nothing there either. Nothing in that cupboard. So the stopcock might be downstairs in a flat like this. We'll have to... So I think this spur is for the central heating programmer, possibly. Oh, I don't know. Not sure about that. Um, and then literally all we've got is this little bedroom. We've got a switch fuse connection unit down there as well. They're dotted around everywhere. Oh, but I, you know, stupid. Of course we know what those were. Those were the electric heating, which are no longer in use. So that little consumer unit for the electric heating is actually redundant. And um, we've got a spur for the boiler here, which looks like it's on its own circuit anyway. So that's easily done. That's fine. So should be quite a quick one. It looks like this could be the main stopcock for the water, but there's no bonding connection there. So it might be that the water isn't actually bonded. Wouldn't be surprised. So actually it looks like probably that was for an, uh, an electric radiator which went there, now they've put central heating in. So that's redundant. Um, this socket, I don't know what it's for. That spur, I don't know what it's for, but it looks like they've done a bit of a renovation in here. Turn all the lights on, make sure they're all working okay. Two-way switching's working, this bedroom light's working. So that spur would have been for a heater as well. So they would have had one in here. Uh, I've got to check up in the loft, see what's going on there. That is blanked off, but there might have been a heater there before as well. So I have to check that out. Wow, funny little one. So I'll get my ladders in and get these covers off and also have a little look up in the loft. All right, so I've just noticed this cupboard where I'm guessing the main bonding for the earth will be. And yeah, there we go. So main stopcock, it is actually a plastic incoming pipe anyway, but they have bonded it and it's a fairly new bonding clamp on there. And then there's a funny little 2.5 earth coming off the side of it as well. So not sure what that's for. But anyway, main bonding is in place, which is good. Even though it's plastic, so it doesn't really need to be. This place kind of smells of a mixture of paint, new carpets, and smoke. So I've got a feeling that they actually had sort of probably a bad tenant. Well, not necessarily, not that I'm saying it's bad if you're you know, you're a bad person if you're a smoker, but, um, you know, they, they obviously stunk the place out with smoke and they've had to redecorate the whole place, put new carpets down, but the electrics <laughs> have not been done yet. So I'm going to look up in here now and see if there's anything fun up in the loft. All right, so... Okay, well, it's insulated, it's pretty warm up here. It's a very hot day, but I can't really see any electrics apart from just, there's an, uh, an aerial and a water tank, but no, no electrics to speak of, no socket or loft light anyway. So that's good. Back down. So while I'm up here, I'll just take the cover off this pendant and just get a little glimpse of what the wiring might be like. So it's a new pendant, but old wiring. It looks like somebody had a go at doing some electrics in here, but 
Um, yeah, not quite sure. So this one is kind of an end of line, so this will be a good one to test out probably. Um, wiring itself looks to be fairly good. It's not that old, it's probably original 1980s and it's PVC, so should be fine. So I'm gonna get the main cover off now. And there is no main isolator, so there's no way for me to isolate the incoming tails, but I can just uh, turn the outgoing circuits off at least. And then I'll have a little go. This one's a bit loose anyway. The whole thing's whole thing's loose really. So obviously it used to be an off peak immersion heater and some storage heaters but Seems like they've been disconnected. This one says actually number one cooker, number two ring, number three boiler, number four lights. So at least we know what's working. Okay, so we've got six mil cooker. 2.5 ring, 2.5 for the um, boiler, and a couple of 1 mils going out for the lights. So everything looks fairly good, no sign of burning or anything. Um, yeah, no, no issues really. But because there's no RCD protection for the sockets, I'm tempted to put that as a code two um, because although you know it's a flat there is this ground floor part if they wanted to do something outside like pressure wash their car or whatever then you know they would run an extension lead from one of these sockets presumably like the socket down here in the hallway and then that could be used for mobile equipment outside so there's you know there's no outside sockets that are RCD protected or anything as far as I can see so I would probably just code that as a code too. And in the end, I'll just re recommend probably replacing these consumer units, putting new RC Hager RCBO consumer unit in um, with an SPD. Get rid of that because it's redundant. But anyway, we'll do some testing on the wiring and see what we can come up with. Right, so first things first, let me show you inside the consumer unit. Um, so we've got 16mm mains tails, neutral bar here, buzz bar all looks okay. I always like to check underneath to make sure that there's no kind of signs of burning or anything, but that all seems fine. These connections all seem fine too. Uh, a tricky thing here is that we've got the, the main bonding connections which are actually behind the MCBs, so the only way to actually remove and pull out those main earth and main bonding connections is to take the MCBs off the bus bar, which is a bit annoying. So what I might do is just pull the main fuse on in the meter box and then disconnect the main earthing conductors from the main earthing terminal in the PME um, earth terminal and just do it that way. This board is an old redundant board, which was for some heating. So that was turned off when I got here and it looks like there's just some old switch use connection units which are not used anymore. Um, so I'll probably recommend to the customer that we just get rid of these and, and either convert the switch use connection units into sockets or just get rid of them completely. The, actually I can probably use this one to get a ZDB reading, but I don't know if I'll be able to disconnect all the bonding conductors, so I might have to just put a limitation on the ZE reading. Um, two sets of tails, but they're both connected in the same block. 
This obviously, so we've got a cooker circuit here, we've got a ring circuit, we've got a radial um, for the boiler, and then we've got lighting, which is all in one circuit. There's only about five, six lights in the property anyway, so that's not a problem. This consumer unit is loose, so that's one of the first things I will mention on the report is that it's loose and needs fixing back. But I can, I can foresee this being a recommendation for a replacement consumer unit, to be honest and that'll just sort everything out. As long as the wiring's okay, then that'll just get everything up to scratch. But we're gonna do some testing now. So I will do my ZE and PFC tests. Then I'll get my long wander lead out and we'll do the R2 testing throughout the property and just check to make sure that there's circuit protective conductors everywhere, protecting all the exposed metal work. Then once that's done, we'll do ring final continuity test on this circuit here, just to make sure that we do have a proper ring. And then we will do, there's no RCD testing to do, so that saves one step. So then we'll do insulation resistance tests, and then we will do earth loop impedance tests. And it's gonna be good, because I'll be able to do the two wire earth loop impedance tests, which I don't get to do very often, because there's no RCD to worry about tripping. So let's jump into it. Right, so here at the meter box, um, the, the main fuse is all sealed with tags, these Henley blocks are all sealed, so I'm not gonna cut the seals. I'm just gonna put a limitation on doing ZE. I'll just do ZDB at the boards, and that should be sufficient anyway. Um, it's very unlikely that there's a problem with the PME earth. So, that's all I can do really. Meter tails and everything seem to be connected okay. Everything's labeled up, so that's good. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to start doing continuity testing now. Okay, so ZDB I've got 0 0.19 and PFC I've got 1.4 Ka, so that's fine. So now I'll do my R2 tests. Fine. 
think you'll be tall, I hear you saying. Now when it comes to doing an R2 test on the main bonding connections, we can do them connected like that, but there could be parallel paths through the pipes. So in order to get an accurate reading, we actually need to disconnect them at this end. So I'll just do that. And then we'll get a reading. So that's even lower. So that's absolutely fine. I mean, it's a super close run from the consumer unit, this one anyway. It's only about two meters away from the consumer unit. So very unlikely to be anything wrong with it. But it's always worth to check. Right, so we do have earth continuity for this light, but if you look above there, can you see that? They've just crunched all the connections up above the light fitting. They've not put them in a proper junction box or anything, which is not ideal really. So it looks like a bit of a DIY job, whoever's done it. Just put them in connector blocks and tape them up. So I might have to mention that on the report. Let me know what you would code that as. And also, do you think this light fitting is really IP rated? Um, I don't think so somehow. This looks like more of a bathroom light to me than a, I mean a bedroom light really than a bathroom light. There's massive great gaps there and there and above. So if you sprayed it with a shower, it would be, I mean, technically it's pretty just outside the zones though, because it's literally, you know, the line is about here. Let me know what you'd do about that. Right, so just a little update. I've been busy testing this R2, I've literally been around every single light. I mean, there's, there's so few of them, just makes sense to do them all. So I've tested every single light, every single switch, every single socket for R2, and um, any other exposed metal work and things like that. Oh, the only thing I've not tested is this light fitting. I almost forgot. Um, let me just show you this one now and see what's going on. Because the bathroom light was earthed, but it looked like a bit of a DIY job, shall we say. And often with these metallic light fittings, often with these metallic light fittings, they're put up by homeowners, yeah, and they're not earth probably. Okay. That seems too easy. Oh yeah, <laughs> there we go. Honestly, I didn't set that up, but um, I was a bit suspicious about that because it looks like a new kind of cheap and cheerful LED light and no earth connection to that. Now it might be that it's one of those class two light fittings that they do nowadays. Even though it's metal, it's class two. So I will just take the fitting down and check what's going on with that. But apart from that, everything is well earthed, all the sockets and, and things, and they've all got good low readings. So after this, um, I'll just check that light fitting now, and then once that's done, I will do a ring continuity test. Okay, so now that the continuity of CPCs is done, the R2 testing, and everything's fine, I'm gonna do continuity of ring final circuits which is just the one circuit for the moment. Um, so I'm just gonna remove the wires from these terminals here, and then test between the, uh, each leg of the ring to make sure that we've got continuity all the way around. Now, of course, in an old consumer unit like this, guess what they did? Put both CPCs in one piece of sleeving and twisted them together so now I've got to try and untwist these before I can actually do the test. Or I can just test at one of the socket outlets, which is sometimes easier, to be honest. So I might just do that. I might just take off one of the socket covers and just do a test there instead. Saves faffing around with this. Yeah, 
let's do that. Right, well, they've twisted the CPCs together here as well. But to be honest, it's easier to unravel them here and put them back neatly than it is to do it at the consumer unit. So I'm just going to do it here. So got to zero my leads again because I've been using my long wander lead. So I need to just clip those together. So just do zero button. And that gets rid of the resistance from the leads. And then just undo these crop clips and we'll do the phase conductors first. So point three six and the neutrals. Point three three and the CPCs one point zero seven, which is quite a lot higher. Uh, but it might be that it's that old style of cabling that has one mil earth. I think that's probably the case. It's one mil earth instead of one point five, so that's probably why that the resistance is a bit higher. Okay, so uh, ring continuity was fine. So we'll do insulation resistance now, and I'm just gonna test across all the circuits in one go, because there's only a few circuits and there's nothing really connected. So we'll do phase two CPC first. And we've got, yeah, well over 300 mega ohms. So that's good. Testing at 500 volts, by the way. And then phase to neutral. I mean, sorry, CPC to neutral. And we're off the scale with that as well. And then I'll just put it down to 250 volts um, and just test phase to neutral as well and just see if there's anything going on. Yeah, we've got probably a couple of, well, we've got all the lights. So if I turn the lights off, Probably get, no, no, uh, try that. Yeah, so the sockets and the cooker are, are all clear, face to neutral, but the boiler circuit, obviously it's got things connected and the lights are all turned on. So I'll just put limitation for face to neutral on those. Uh, I'll do the heating circuits as well, just to see what the readings are like on those. Cables, all clear phase to CPC. All clear neutral to CPC. And all clear phase to neutral. Just do it again at 500 volts just to double check everything. All good, fine. So now because there's no RCDs to test, we skip that stage and we go straight to the live testing. So what I'll do is just put the covers on the boards now and then I'll go through and test that everything is, um, I'll just do yeah, earth loop impedance tests on all the circuits that are in use. I'm not gonna test earth loop impedance on these heating circuits. I'll just leave those out because they're probably gonna be disconnected anyway. But I'll do the cooker, the sockets, the lights, and the boiler. Um, so let's go. Uh, before I forget, one important step, before you put the covers back on, once the, light, the dead testing is done, it's important to just check the tightness of all the connections. That is actually a thing on the checklist for the inspection, is uh, the tightness of all connections. So I'm just gonna go over it and just test all the connections now, make sure that they're nice and tight. I don't have any torque settings for these particular breakers, so I'm just gonna tighten them to with my normal screwdriver to a, a torque that I think is reasonable. 
So we're going to test earth loop impedance now for the socket circuits. And because there's no RCD, we can test on this high current setting, which usually gives a bit more of an accurate reading, which is nice, and it's also quicker to test. Using the no trip test tends to take longer and the readings can vary quite a lot. So just press the test button and there we go. Very quickly, we've got a reading 0 0.37, which is great. So I'm just gonna go around every single socket. I always do that. I just, uh, you know, I know some people would just test the furthest one or something, but I always just test every single socket because there's always a possibility of uh, polarity issues. And it's so quick to do that it's just worth doing, really. So we go around, we count up the number of points as we go around, so that's three so far. I'm just going to go around in a logical manner. What I usually do as well is just leave the switch on when I've tested the socket so that I know that I've done that particular one. Um, so, this one, the cooker, I've, I've turned that on as well. Obviously, it's a different circuit, but we can test that while we're here. 0.29, which is good. Under here, there's a socket. So, I'll just put that one in. Seven. I'm going to plug the washing machine back in while I'm here. Still don't know what that switch fuse connection unit's for. Unless it's for this fridge, actually. 0.4. I'm presuming this is for where the fridge goes. Okay, that doesn't, doesn't change anything. So I have no idea what that's for really. It's a bit strange. Anyway, um, so where was I with the counting? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus the two switch fuse connection units that we don't know about yet. Eight. I think that's probably an old circuit for the heating, but I'm going to just take the cover off and check that in a minute. Ten. Okay, so ten points on that circuit, and the highest reading we had was like 0 0.47. Uh, I've got to take the cover off this and test that one, and I'll just check a couple of these switch fuse connection units to figure out what's going on with those. Right, so I've got this switch fuse connection unit off now, and um, it is actually off the socket circuit. It's not an old heater spur, but it's not doing anything. There's nothing coming out of the outgoing terminal, so I don't know what it used to do. Maybe they had panel heaters for during the day or something. Um, anyway, a little tip for you when doing earth loop impedance. If you're struggling to get your crocodile clips onto the earth uh, terminals, what I tend to do is just poke a screw through the ring, uh, the eyelet here, like that, and then just clip your crocodile clip onto the screw, because the screw is always earthed, and that way you can just clip that on and then you've got a free hand to do your live connection. So that's what I usually do if I can't get my crocodile clip on the earth terminal. Like there, it's a bit close to the um, live terminal and it's just hard to get onto, so I just do it with the screw. Okay, so this is that high level one, which is the same, there's nothing going out of it, so maybe it was for a heater up, a high level heater or something before, but there's nothing connected to it. I've done an earth loop test and I've got 0 0.33 on there, so that's fine. So I'm just going to screw that back now. So this is the third spur next to a socket and this is exactly the same as well. It's off the ring circuit and um, there's nothing outgoing. There is a flex outlet underneath. So I assume that it was used for some kind of heater in the past. 
but it's just redundant. But that makes me wonder where the electrics are for the old storage heaters from that old storage heater board. And I think actually what they've done is they've just put blank plates over them or just um, completely disconnected them. Right, so this is that kind of classic situation that I told you about in the last video where you screw an accessory back and the screw's already slightly threaded uh, and it's shredded and it just gives up. So I'm just going to fit two new screws on this one and I'm going to just use my re-threading tool to re-thread those just to make sure that the threads are good on those. Right, so... I recently got myself this, which is a CK Tools re-threading tool. You can get different sizes. This is an M3.5, which is for the standard socket screws that you have in socket outlets and switches in the UK. But you can get an M4 one as well, which is for the slightly larger brass type screws that you usually use for conduit boxes and things like that. I got both actually, um, because I had one in the past, but it snapped off once when I was using it. So, just going to open this up and show you how it works. As always, packaging is. There we go. Right. So, this is it. And basically, as you can see, it's just got um, thread die there. So, what you do is you just use that to screw in to the old threaded holes in the back box and you just keep it steady slowly turning it until it sort of turns and spins really nice and loose as if you were putting in a screw and that just means that you've got a nice good thread on there so that's the left one done and then I'll do the right one as well Obviously it's important to turn the uh, circuit off before you start doing this. There we go. So that's got me a nice thread on there. Just don't try and bend the lugs back while you've got this in because you just end up snapping them off. That's what, how I broke my last one. And they're really hard to drill out actually because they're made of really hard metal. So if it snaps off and gets stuck in the thread, it's a real nightmare. So these are the old screws that were basically cross-threaded. And because they've been cross-threaded, they've cross-threaded the lugs as well. But now I've got a good thread on the lugs, what I wanna do is just put some new screws in. So I keep a load of spare socket screws usually in the van. Unfortunately, they, they tend to have like either really long ones or the normal length. And you don't have like, like I would enjoy maybe a 30 mil length or something. These are about 50, which is just a bit too much. So I usually end up having to cut these down. So I just I just measure it up roughly on how long it needs to be. Um, so I'll cut about a centimetre off of it, maybe a little bit more. I mean, actually you can see from this how long it needs to be. A normal length one would, uh, would actually be fine. So I'll just cut these to kind of normal length. I don't know if you can get just spare normal leg, normal length ones. But I just cut them off with a pair of pliers and then that will usually just screw straight in nicely. There we go. And the same with the other one. It's important to line them up properly. There we go. Perfect. Once you've got the first few turns in, then they go in absolutely fine. If you're finding it too hard, like it's not screwing in easily and loosely then usually it's because you've got it cross threaded and you need to just stop what you're doing and start again because otherwise you'll end up shredding the, the lug in the box again. There we go, those are nice, nice and tight now. So that's it, the CK Tools 95028M3 times 0.6, mp3.5 times 0.6. Rethreading tool, I'll leave a link in the description for this so you can check it out if you want one. Right, so now we've just got to test this boiler circuit. So 
again. Okay, so I can't use the lug on that one. The left lug is earth, but not the right one. That's interesting. Anyway, I'll get my crocodile clip on the left lug and then the other probe on there. And we got 0 0.27, perfect. So the final step now is to test the lighting. And because I don't really know what the end of line is on this, I'm just gonna do the tests at a few of the lights and take the highest reading. It's quickly done, so might as well do it and do it properly. So I've just tested this one and I've got a reading of 0 0.92, but um, the brown and the blue are the wrong way around. So that's the live terminal and that's the neutral terminal. So, I mean, usually that's correct. The neutral terminal has the three screws and the switch live terminal has only two screws, but for some reason the blue and brown are the wrong way around. Now it's not a big deal because it's a bayonet cap light. So it's kind of polarity is not really important anyway. If it was an Edison screw one, then I would code it. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it. So in terms of the old off-peak circuits, which are redundant now, it looks like that is the old off-peak um, point for the old immersion heater, which has obviously been removed when they put a central heating system in. So that's fine. That's just blanked off can't find any blank plates in this room but there is one down here this is a blank plate which has probably got one of the old storage heater points behind it and then that's all I can find up here so unless there's another one downstairs which I can't see I think that the other one has either been plastered in or it's just hidden somewhere maybe hidden behind a radiator or something Okay, yeah, so here it is. Look, it's hidden behind these pipes. That looks like the other old storage heater point. So they've all been completely removed, which means that actually that board there is completely redundant and can be got rid of. And then we can just put a new consumer unit in, which will probably cover both of those spaces anyway and have RCD protection. I think RCD protection is especially important from the fact of the lights in the bathroom and also the fact that there's this downflow heater in the bathroom which should be protected by an RCD really so the sockets I think it's quite unlikely that they will run anything outside of them but you never know but in terms of uh, safety real safety issues this is one of them for me so I'm just going to recommend RCD protection for all the circuits and just get that consumer unit upgraded right so we're pretty much done here i've um, put everything back together i've labeled this with a one year date because i'm going to fail it on the basis of code twos so i've basically given them a year to get the, re the um, issues rectified 
and I'll put the same on the report for the retest date. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I always like to hear your opinions about things. And if you've enjoyed this video, as always, hit a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already because I post regular videos like this and you will not miss out if you hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching and have a great day.